Now, to finish this example off, we're going to determine the influence line for the internal moment at point E. And the first thing we got to do, again, is draw the structure with the action removed. And here, at point E, what we need to do is be able to transfer shears and axial forces across point E, but allow rotation, which really screams hinge. So we're going to throw in a hinge here. So here's my open dot for the hinge. And then I like to put little connectors to from the member to the hinge. Next, I want to add the unit displacement, or in this case, a unit rotation, and draw the deflective shape. And the direction of rotation for each segment of my member here depends on what I choose as my internal positive sign convention. And so here, normally, what's done for moments, at least in the way I like to do things, is to have positive moments where compression on the top and tension on the bottom is considered positive. And here, I'm going to apply these rotations here as if I cut the member. Segment EBC is going to have to rotate clockwise, but has to remain grounded at point B. So in terms of a rigid body motion, you know, I'm going to make sure I'm going to rotate this whole member clockwise. Right here, so that's member EBC rotated clockwise with po point B having to remain zero. Segment AE is going to rotate counterclockwise, but since point A has to remain grounded, it's just going to do that. Here, because I have the hinge, I can rotate here at the hinge, or I have some rotation, and so I'm free to rotate there, and I'm going to draw the rest of segment CD, because D is grounded. These are my series of rigid body motions that take place for my member here. The displacements that are of interest to me are this, I'll call that Y1, and I'll call this Y2. And the thing I know about a rotation is if this were to continue here, the relative rotation between the ends of these members here, this angle, I'll call this theta, must equal 1. If I were to break up this angle with a horizontal line here, this angle is theta A, and this angle is theta B. And theta A plus theta B equals 1. And this is a relationship I'm going to use to determine uh, all my values of y1 and y2. So to get going with our geometry calculations, I know that the relationship between y1 and theta a and 4 meters is that y1 is equal to 4 meters times theta a. Again, with small angle assumptions and small deformations, this is valid. And I could sub I can rearrange this to be theta a is equal to y1 over 4 meters. And I can do the same thing with theta b. Theta b is equal to y1 over 6 meters. And now I can substitute these into this relationship here. y1 over 4 meters plus y1 over 6 meters equals 1. And I can solve for y1. And that tells me that y1 is equal to 2.4 meters. Now, because I know that theta b, or these, you know, these segments, segment eb and bc, share the same slope, I can go ahead and use similar triangles to determine y2, which tells me that y1 over 6 meters is equal to y2 over 7.5 meters. And I can solve for y2, which is 3 meters. I have values that I need for my influence line graph and I'm just going to go ahead and replot it. All right, and there's my influence line for the internal moment at E with a unit concentrated force that's moving across this beam structure. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and take it easy. See ya.